Hey guys, uh, welcome back uh, to another update on this uh, whole CNC project thing I'm working on. I got the box all cut out, as you can see, and uh, all the holes drilled out for all the different boards and stuff that are going to go in there. The opening for the fan in the back, and I got the plexi cut out, and uh, all the holes made for that too, and uh, they're all tapped so that all these screws will fit on there uh, and hold it down. I'm probably going to put some foam on the on the case part on the inside here so that the bare the plexi is not just sitting on that so it has a little bit of cushioning. Uh, one thing I'm not too thrilled about with this case and it's been like that since I bought it is that it's got these areas where the I'm not sure if it's powder coated or what but anyways there's these uh, spots where they kind of look like warts or you know something but basically what's what's happening in those is that there's rust underneath it so that means that the metal probably wasn't uh, very clean when they coated it and uh, that's in a lot of places and I mean like as I said that that was on there since before I even cut it out or anything so it's not like about me doing that or all that cutting or anything uh, made that happen um, the bottom looks pretty okay and actually so does the inside there's really nothing there but like on the outsides and some of the areas here as you can see there's more right there and uh, I can show you that there's rust underneath it if I scrape some of it off you can see it's just kind of like bubbled on there so that right there is all rusty so I'm gonna see if I can get this sandblasted and you know uh, get it all nice and clean and then just give it like a fresh uh, coat of like spray paint or something because uh, I mean that kind of sucks I mean I could have sprayed over it you know to give it a different color but if there's gonna be all this rust and stuff underneath it you know it's not gonna fix anything you're still gonna be able to see that from uh, the outside so that kind of sucks but oh well I mean <laughs> but the case itself actually worked out pretty well the boards themselves are going to be mounted to that case using these uh, 440 screws that I have here with matching nuts I actually went looking for some uh, little nylon standoffs you know with the like the hole in the center that were about maybe like a quarter inch high and I went to local Home Depot they didn't have any so I ended up going to Osh and they had some but they wanted 59 cents per little standoff and they didn't even I mean I need like a total of 12 in here and they didn't even have that many there was only like a few in their little drawer thing so that would have worked out to like I don't know six some six seven bucks or so around around there and uh, you know I've, I've only would have gotten 12 of these um, I mean it's it's not gonna like break the bank or anything but for only 12 of these I went on eBay and then I saw that I could get a pack of a hundred for about the same price as I would have paid for just uh, 12 um, but since they didn't have them, I ended up buying a little piece of uh, polyethylene tubing and just cutting them out to like these little quarter inch lengths, which uh, I was going to use, you know, I have the screw coming in from the, like the underside of the case, like for example, you know, it would come up like that, and then I would have the little standoff on top of that, and then the board, and then the nut, but I, with some uh, locking washers. Um, but then I remembered... I had these uh, 440 nuts, uh, also nylon, and uh, it's a pack of 50, and as you can see it was, uh, or not 50, 25, but it was considerably less than buying uh, a bunch of those uh, nylon standoffs from Osh at 59 cents, geez. So anyways, 249 for this 25 pack, and uh, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to still stick the screw in from underneath the case, but then I'm going to use each one of these nuts and thread it over the top and that'll hold the screws in place and uh, you know allow them to, uh, me to put all the screws in and then put the boards on top because the way I was having to do it before is I had to put all the screws in from the bottom hold them with my hand put the board on top and then put the nut you know to hold it down but with this method I'll be able to just put the screws in from underneath put the nut on and that'll hold all of them in place I don't have to worry about them falling out or uh, being at the right angle then I put the nut on on the top of the board to hold it down so after I get this case all sandblasted and uh, painted again, it'll probably look a lot prettier. And I'll put the electronics back inside and we'll see how it all turns out in the end. But I think it's uh, it's going to look pretty good. I already kind of tested everything in there and, you know, just kind of like just uh, ran the wiring so I could kind of get a feel for the layout and everything. And um, I think it looked pretty okay. So we'll see how that goes. All right. So another thing I was uh, going to work on for this uh, project is to make a dust separator or a dust collector. And in case you don't know, the way this works is you have like this cone-shaped uh, separator down here with uh, some sort of a vacuum pump or a blower. And what this does is basically it sucks in air through this hose 
and you know it goes out um, all the dust kind of comes in here and it swirls around the cone and it ends up like falling into a container which in this case is going to be like a five gallon um, a five gallon uh, bucket so I'm going to be building this cone and I don't know exact uh, shapes measurements or anything here but I'm basically going to have like about a 15 inch uh, long cone with an 11 inch uh, diameter top and I think I was going to go with like a 6 inch bottom there and then I just got to figure out what to do for uh, like a hose right here in the middle although what I think I'm going to do is I got a vacuum motor from a, a Dyson that I think might work pretty well for this project which I can probably just mount directly on top and that's going to be my my vacuum motor so then that's going to you know expel the air out I'm probably going to have some filters in there too just to you know prevent like any dust that does get out from like blowing out into the garage or anything like that so um, that's going to be that so this is the the vacuum motor I got uh, that's uh, the intake right there it's got this uh, big heavy gasket here so that might actually be good for making some sort of a ring or something that I can uh, or maybe like a split ring that I can put around on the edges right here and clamp it down to where that of the cone is going to be so that should hold it down pretty well like that and then this is the this is the exhaust port right here so I can uh, put in one of the filters there like that originally comes with it and uh, find some way to like hold it on but yeah it's got pretty good suction so I think it'll work pretty well for this um, I didn't really have any other blowers or anything I could use so I don't know unless I come across something better later on because this does uh, suck <laughs> quite a bit of power and um, I don't know maybe there's some way I can uh, kind of limit it to what it does because it gets pretty hot I mean you, you feel the air coming out of here and it's it's really warm because the way this works is it sucks in through here uh, the motors inside if the air blows across the the motor the windings and the armature of the rotor and all that and then it comes out through here so it gets it gets pretty hot so I'm gonna see if uh, you know we come up with something that maybe even if it does spin a little bit slower whatever as long as it's got like you know enough suction to um, be able to pull in enough dust as the machines working you know then I think I'll be good and two more things I just recently received were these uh, drag chains I ordered on eBay they have an uh, internal um, size of a 10 by 15 millimeters which is actually just enough for what I'm going to be running through it I'm just going to be running the cables for the uh, the power to the router and then the stepper motors and then there's another like bundle of cables that I think has like 10 conductors in it that I'm going to like run to the top that's going to be for like the limit switches and uh, anything else I might need which I shouldn't be a, a whole lot so I got these two one's going to be for like for like the bottom like they're running along like the X and then the other one's going to be the one for the top that like runs along the Y. So that's uh, what I'll be using for those. Alright, the cone for the dust collector is actually going to be made with uh, metal. And I'm actually using this outside casing from a old washing machine as you can see. Um, the front just had uh, enough material to be able to shape the cone out of to dimensions I wanted. Uh, this, uh, I made a stencil. And uh, I actually made this using an online calculator that I found. The cone itself, it's supposed to be like, you know, this inner area here, but I allowed a little bit of extra space here so I can rivet the thing together once I've um, done with it. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of uh, material missing up here at the top, maybe some a little bit here on the bottom, but I don't think I should uh, be too big of a deal once I cut it out and I roll it up. Yeah, we got Fiona chilling out here in the backyard. Fiona's a big fat chubby bunny, aren't you? You're a big bunny. Yeah, it's a big bunny. Yeah. This video has actually been in the making for a few weeks now and I'm not going to make it run too much longer uh, this time. But as you can see now I've got the box completely done and I've got rid of those uh, nasty areas that were playing in the box that were here and uh, here on the side. Admittedly it's not the best uh, paint job in the world but it's sufficient for my purposes here and I think it looks a lot nicer than it actually did. I got all the little screws in place uh, mounted and as you can see they're in on the bottom and I've got those nylon nuts holding them in place so those are all uh, going to be the ones that are holding the boards now and uh, all these nuts are you know they're the same size so they're not going to be the boards aren't going to sit kind of funky as they did with those other uh, little tubings that I had cut and, and put in place instead of the standoffs so now for a little bit of magic Presto, it's done. Well, not quite done, but I've got all the boards and stuff in place, and I think it looks pretty good. I don't know about you. Uh, feel free to comment, whatever whatever you think about it. But uh, see, all the boards are there. Everything's wired. 
I tried to keep the wiring as uh, clean as possible so that I don't have like a big jumbled mess of uh, wires running all over the place. So all I gotta do now is uh, put the plexi back on and figure out what I need to drill all the all the holes for ventilation and everything. So this uh, as is pretty much works and uh, there's the two front connectors as you can see I tried to run all the wiring in underneath there. Um, so maybe in the next video we'll do some testing with the actual PC and the software. I also have to work on making the linear bearings which I'm probably just gonna do with some angle aluminum and skateboard as I've seen in other videos that other people have done. So yeah still a lot left to do but I think uh, pretty much on the electronics uh, or electronics wise uh, this is all pretty much done. Uh, most of the what's left to do is most is a lot of the actual mechanical components and the uh, the table and the gantry and all that stuff. So that's more to come. But uh, for now, I hope uh, you enjoyed this. Remember to thumbs up if you like this stuff and uh, subscribe if you want more updates. And thanks for watching again. See you guys next time.